one of, if not the face of boxing, makes his return to the ring on June 15th as Gervonta Tank Davis returns after 14 months being out of the ring. After his monumental knockout win over Ryan Garcia back in April last year, Tank Davis is back in the ring against a really good opponent in Frank the Ghost Martin. An opponent that's going to challenge Tank in a fight that, after this layoff, is set to be a really good one in Las Vegas on June 15th. We're getting the return of one of the biggest stars in not only boxing, one of the biggest stars in all of sports. Someone in Tank Davis who brings out celebrities, brings out everybody, tunes in to his fights whenever he's fighting. And June 15th, he's back in Vegas to fight Tank Davis versus Frank Martin. This one's going to be good. Frank Martin, a really good fighter looking to prove something and take his career to the next level with a win over Tank Davis. Before we get into the preview of the fight, this is the Never Drop Podcast. Make sure you hit subscribe, follow, like the video, and leave a comment below. Who do you think is going to win this fight? Let's get back to the preview of this really huge fight in Las Vegas that's taking place on June 15th. Trevante Dave, I say that name, you already know. 29-0, 27 knockout. Arguably, him and Canelo are the two faces of boxing. Tank, he's been out of the ring for a while after his career-defining win over Ryan Garcia that did 1.2 million pay-per-view buys. He had to be sidelined for the rest of the year in early parts of 20. 24 because of legal issues, but he's back now. Back in against an opponent, Frank Martin, 18 and 0 with 12 knockouts, whose speed, quick decisions look pose a potential problem for Tank in the ring. Let's go through some numbers real quick. As I mentioned, Tank Davis, 29 and 0, 27 knockouts. He's a southpaw. He's five five and a half, and his reach is right around 67 and a half. Reach posed to really other Tank fights isn't going to play too much a factor here because when you look at Frank Martin, I mentioned he's 18 and 0 with 12 knockouts. He's also a southpaw. He has a height of five eight, two and a half inches taller than Tank. Tanks people way taller than that and I believe he's honestly more comfortable fighting guys who are taller than him so height will not pose any real issues here and the reach as I mentioned Frank Martin only has a reach of 68 so he has half an inch reach difference on tank really not anything that's going to win you a fight obviously having a reach leads to potential better jab boxing from the outside not letting a guy like Gervonta Davis get on the inside and potentially land power shots from the inside but I think this fight's going to be really played on the inside. I don't think there's going to be much boxing in this fight. I think once they start picking up and going at each other, we're going to get fireworks pretty early. Tank's last fight, an absolute spectacle. I was in the house in Vegas for that one. You can go back and check other videos from that fight. Knockout against Ryan Garcia. Knocked him down in the second round, hit him with a body shot. In the seventh, Ryan took a knee, and that was all she wrote. That fight was back on April 22nd. I mentioned the legal troubles. He's been off. Before that Ryan fight, he wanted to fight three times in 2023. He had fought once before against Hector Luis Garcia. He wanted to fight another time, but legally he just wasn't allowed. He was on house arrest. He was in jail for, I think, about two months. He just, it, there was no no possible scenario where he was able to. We're in June of this year. He's got a fight against Frank Martin lined up. For Tank, fight against Ryan Garcia went about as perfect as you could from his point of view, especially seeing what Ryan Garcia did now against Devin Haney, someone obviously a tank for Devin Haney fight. We all have wanted that forever. Even with the controversy behind steroids, Austrian PEDs with Ryan, what Tank did, he was able to neutralize what Ryan does best, aka the left hook, deliver his own power punches. You remember that second round, Ryan threw about four in a row. Tank said, okay, let me duck each one of them and hit you with my left hand. Only I think Tank's like third punch of the fight dropped Ryan in the second. Tank was in, the, in control the entire time. Ryan got a few Good shots in, sixth, fifth round. Tank hit him to the body, and I think the body is going to play a huge factor in this fight as well. It was really a great performance from Tank Davis and elevated his superstardom in the sport. For Frank Martin, his last fight didn't give you the same feeling you got after Tank's win against Ryan. Obviously, Tank's fight, a whole big magnitude. Frank fought Artem Hardin Nunyan. I'm My apologies if I mispronounce it, the last name. We're going to call it first name Artem. He's going to be fighting Shakur Stevenson on July 6th. Frank won that by unanimous decision. The unanimous decision that really left everyone at watching that fight going, ooh, yeah, he won that fight. That was not a good performance. Artem, who's a solid fighter, nothing special to say the least. And Frank did not look good. He won by pretty close margins on 115 to 112 on two cards and 114 to 113 on the other card. A really close fight that, again, I think Frank won it. I'm not mad at the decision, but it's one of those that you said, okay, let's, if you're Frank and your fans, you want to forget about that, say a win's a win, you got to win no matter what, and just keep moving. Frank in that fight looked really reluctant to throw punches. It looked like maybe he wanted to be showcasing his defense, but I don't think Artem 
was the type of guy that you're going to be showing a lot of defense. And he was getting hit with shots from Arnold. It really wasn't until probably 10th, 11th, 12th that Frank Martin kind of turned it up. And when he turned it up, he did really well. He was hitting Arnold with good shots. Heck, Arnold had to take a knee in the 12th to buy him some time. He thought he was up on the scorecards. So he took a knee, said, I'll take the point loss. I'm up and I can just run out the clock here. Unfortunately for Artem, he was not up on the cards. And even if he didn't take a knee, it would have been a majority decision, but it wasn't a good performance from Frank, especially he was coming off a career best win against Michelle Rivera back December 2022, which he floored Rivera. It really just, he showed power, he showed speed, he showed footwork. All of that was put on display against Rivera. And in his fight against Artem, it just didn't look like he was all there. Derek James was in his corner saying, throw punches. You got to go. You got to go. You got to go. And Frank just wasn't going. And I think that's something that in this fight, because when you get in the ring with Tank Davis, a lot of guys, this is obviously the biggest part of their career biggest fight of their career, but they've never been in a scenario even close to this. Like, obviously, Tank, the fight with Tank is at the top tier level. You know, I don't even think Frank has been on the tier below. Frank's been fighting two tiers below, two levels below, and he's jumping up to that top tier. And I'm not saying that he's two tiers below as a fighter. I'm saying the fights he's fought in, because again, he only has 18 total fights. Frank has not had just the number of experiences and fights that Tank and all these other lightweights have had. So I think when he does get in that ring, to start this fight, I think he's going to be a little resistant to throw. Tank catches him with a nice punch. Is he going to be even more resistant to throw. That's a possibility. And we even saw that with when he fought Artem. He just wasn't throwing at the rate we usually see him throw at. Frank's kind of been on a long layoff himself. That Artem fight took place in July, July 15th of last year. So this will be 11 months to the day on June 15th when he fights. Tank, both guys been on a layoff. Ring rust is a potential factor. Oh, if you remember with Frank, he was in talks to fight Shakur. That fight fell apart. And really, I think everyone said, okay, we're not going to jump. A lot of people obviously called Frank a duck, said what they wanted to say. But I think a lot of people also realized, hey, PBC, him and Tank, that seems like the fight that they're going to make. If he doesn't fight Tank, okay, maybe we can say he's a duck or he ducked Shakur. But if he goes to Tank to say he turned down a fight to fight someone else who honestly is a tougher matchup. That's an, that's not a duck, right? So seeing that this fight was made with Tank Davis, it was okay. We kind of see what we kind of saw back in December or November. Or, I, I don't I don't remember what month it was. We kind of see, okay, this was going to be the vision for how it was going to play out for Frank and Tank fight because on the PBC side of it, that's really the only matchup. And especially for Tank, he's going to have to start crossing the street like he did with Ryan to go fight these other promote these fighters on the other promotions, like a Shakur Stevenson, like if he goes up to 140 to fight a Devin Haney, a Tiafima Lopez, a Lomachenko at uh, top rank at 135. There's really no other lightweights at PBC. This fight, really for Tank, might be one of the last, if he's going to be victorious in this one, that he's going to be fighting PBC lightweight. You have Rayo, and that's about it. Honestly, I'm blanking. I was going to even say Pitbull Cruz, but he's at 140. You could make that fight, that rematch. We'll see. But at 135, which Tank has been adamant in saying that that's his weight. At 135, there's really no more fights on the PBC side for Tank. So when it comes to the fight, when it comes to June 15th, what do I think is going to happen? What's my prediction for this fight? So what I think, I think Frank, under the spotlights, he's going to be a little gun shy to start. I think a lot of opponents against Tank, to a degree, are. And you don't think of it because Tank doesn't throw punches himself to start. He, like Floyd Mayweather, downloads data. And he often doesn't throw many punches in those early rounds. And his opponents can get away with throwing five or six punches in those first three rounds they outthrow Tank. So I think while Tank might take those for early few rounds, I think Frank's still going to be a little gun-shy, just the lights, the moment, against who he's fighting. I think he's going to be a little bit gun-shy when it comes to those first few rounds in there. Tank collecting data like he does, like Floyd Mayweather does. We've seen it. Tank can get active early in those first rounds if he needs to. I just don't think against Frank Martin, I don't think Frank is going to immediately get in there and start throwing punches because he knows he doesn't want to walk into something. So I think it's going to be another slow start to the fight. I think Frank is going to be able to eat some shots that Gervonta throws at him. I think we're going to be going into the middle later round saying, oh, wow, can Frank take Gervonta Davis's power? I think that's going to be a question. And we've seen it in other fights, like heck, the Mario Barrios fight with Tank. Obviously, Tank went up to 140 for that fight, was saying, oh, maybe someone can take his power. What happens? And then somehow a switch flips and a knockout incurs. But I think we're going to be saying, oh, Frank's doing well. He's eating some good shots here. But I think when it comes to 6th, 7th, 
eighth round, one of those kind of mid, just past the halfway point. I think Frank's going to leave himself open for a shot and Tank's going to get him. Left hand of some sort. I think Tank is going to get Frank and it's going to, it's going to stun Frank Martin. I think he's going to go back to being a little gun shy, a little reluctant because he doesn't want to open himself back up for a shot. I think then Tank will kind of put in an overdrive. He'll take control of the fight and he'll be able to start throwing more punches. And we're going to see Frank Martin kind of on the defensive side of it. Then I think in the ninth round, I think Tank's going to hit Frank Martin with a body shot. I think Frank will probably either be hurt or he'll go down. And if he if he's just hurt, I think Tank's just going to go for the kill, go for the knockout then. And we're going to see a TKO in the ninth round. I think it's a body shot the dozen in this fight. Tank made mention of this in the press conference they had for announcing this fight. He told Frank to, to his face. You don't like body shots. Frank then said, you won't know you don't like body shots. But there's videos. Artem caught Frank with some body shots. Frank had a reaction to it. And with Javante Davis, we know he's knocked down, knocked out people with body shots. Ryan Garcia being the latest. That Mario Barrios fight I talked about. That's how he got to Barrios, I believe, in the 11th round with a body shot. Had him kind of doubled over. I think Tank's going to get him with a body shot because Frank also kind of has a high guard. I think Frank will, when I say leave himself open... It'll be on a counter punch from Dramonte Davis. I think we all know Hank's counter punching is probably second to none in the sport right now, especially mixed in with his power. I think counter punch by Dramonte Davis will be the headshot that kind of rattles Frank Martin, but he's going to finish it with a body similar to the Ryan Garcia, where the shot to the head in the second round done to Ryan kind of shocked him, made him a shell, shell of himself for the next four or five rounds, and then got him out there. Got him out of there with the body shot. So I believe it's going to be a ninth round, probably TKO for, from Tank. My biggest thing is I, I just don't know if Frank Martin is going to go in there wanting to slug it out with Tank. But I also don't know if he has the boxing abilities to stay on the outside, use his footwork, which he does have really good footwork, to be able to jab, jab, hit, get out the way and not get hit. That's something from Frank. I don't know if we're going to see that. I think for him, that's his key. I, I, I don't think he can slug it out with Tank on the inside. And with the lack of reach, I think that's where a lot of this fight's going to be fought, on the inside or in mid-close range. I don't see it being fought on the distance, long distance-wise. I see Tank trying to get inside, land an uppercut, land a hook, and get to that body, which my prediction, I believe you will. Again, I have Tank by PKO in the ninth round. Another matchup in this fight I'm really, really, really interested to see is the matchup between Derek James and Calvin Ford. Both trainers, Alvin obviously with Javante Davis, Derek James with Frank Martin, two of, I believe, the best trainers in the sport of boxing. Derek James, tough run between Spence and Charlo last year, both losing back to back. I don't really blame the Charlo loss on Derek James because he did nothing that it seemed like they trained for. There's been controversy. Apparently, he's suing Earl Spence. A lot of things outside the ring. Derek James came back with a huge win, obviously, with Ryan Garcia over over Devin Haney. That in itself has its own controversy, but for Derek James, that was a huge win for him. There was an interview with Derek James. I believe Najee did it of uh, Cigar Talk, and Derek James was talking about Javante Davis. Like, I don't know. He's a fighter that does everything well. It, it's going to be hard to game plan around him. And then when he's asked about Devin Haney, he's like, oh, I already know what we need to do. He's He does this well. He doesn't do this well. It was just interesting to see the praise he had for Tank Davis, Derek James did. It was like, this guy really likes Javante Davis, and it seems like it's going to be a hard way for them to game plan around him. Opposed to when Ryan Garcia was fighting Devin Haney, it seemed like Derek James had a plan for how he wanted to attack Haney. Calvin Ford, he does a tremendous job with Javante Davis. There's He's going to have Tank ready. Him and Kenny Ellis. Kenny Ellis posts things on Instagrams talking about Frank's the bone in Frank's head is too big. Or he has two long arms. Like, these guys, I really believe, are boxing geniuses in the team they have around each other. I think, obviously, they're going to have Tank ready to fight. But I think they have a game plan. as They know where they want to attack Frank Martin. So I'm excited for the chess match between Kevin Ford and Derek James, two of the best trainers. And how are they going to have their fighter attack the other fighter? This is going to be a great event. Tank Davis back in the ring against Frank Martin. And I can't forget about David Benavidez back in the ring. He's the co-main. Vegas is going to be on fire for this fight. Uh, if I don't make a video about a separate video for the David Benavidez fight, my prediction, I think Benavidez just, he's on a mission right now. I think anyone in his path right now, they're going to lose. I think this is a man on a mission. And it's not even about Canelo. I think it's just about dominance he's trying to achieve. 
So I have David Benavidez by KO, TKO, somewhere. I don't know what round. I haven't done all my research on his opponent, but I have a David Benavidez KO or TKO coming somewhere as he's the co-main. And it's going to be a great night of boxing. When we get the stars back in the ring, it's always a great night. The biggest fight of this year, I'd say, at least in the U.S., Devin Haney versus Ryan Garcia. That one's controversy. It's still before the fight, after the fight. It's It's been a lot. We had Undisputed for heavyweight, Usyk versus Fury. Great fight, but that happened in Saudi Arabia. Here in the U.S., Hank Davis, David Benavidez fighting on the same card. Tank Davis fighting against Frank Martin, a very good fighter. This is perfect for the sport of boxing. It's going to be a great night, June 15th. I'm excited. I know you are as well. This has been the Never Drop Podcast. I got Tank Davis TKO in the ninth round via a body shot and probably a flurry of shots afterwards. And the ref's going to jump in and say, I don't think Frank's going to be able to take any more. Tank Davis remaining undefeated, 30-0, 28 wins by way of knockout. That's what I'm predicting after this fight. Frank Martin, though, not a fighter to sleep on. Don't be shocked if Frank can put up a very good performance in this fight and potentially, with his footwork, cause some problems for Tank Davis. This has been the Never Drop Podcast. Make sure you subscribe, like, comment below. Who do you think is going to win this fight? If you're listening on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, follow this podcast and subscribe on YouTube, the Never Drop Podcast. I have all your information from fights, news, everything. I'll be in the house for Jerron Boots Ennis fight in July in Philadelphia along with Alex Holly. If you follow Frank Martin, you know about Alex Holly in DeSoto on July 6th. Make sure you go. If you're in Texas, go to that fight. That's going to be a good one. Go check out my interview with Alex Holly. I had a few months ago where he talked about this fight, Frank Martin versus Tank Davis. Go check that out. This has been the Never Drop Podcast. That's all I got for you. Tank Davis, TKO, ninth round. Peace. I'm out.